All right, hello everyone, and thank you for tuning in once again to the Black Box Podcast, BBOR, Black Box Online Radio. Now, once a week here on this channel, I'm hoping to do a Q&A session where we read off your comments, and then we have a little bit of a discussion about it. The two major fit themes that we do on this channel are true crime and the upcoming presidential election for 2020, some political things. And this is the first ever political Q&A that I've done on the channel. So, let's get right to it. Our first comment comes to us from Macro Lono. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. M-A-C-R-O-L-O-N-O, Macro Lono. And he made a comment on my video about who the libertarians are going to put up in 2020. And Macro says, From a practical point of view, Rand Paul would be the best choice for the Libertarian Party polling due to his very high name recognition, and of course, Ron Paul won't get to back poll. He just says P-O-L. I'm not sure exactly what he means by that last part, but, um, you know, this turned into a giant upload on this channel, actually. I've covered the possibility of Rand Paul running as a libertarian, and it's like this whole notion is something that the libertarians are kind of arguing out. They are like, do we want to go with someone very famous who has some libertarian ideals, or do we want to go with someone who's actually in the libertarian party? Another person that they've talked about has been William Weld, and, you know, like he was Gary Johnson's running mate, but a lot of people are like, why are they trying to go so frequently to Republicans? Why not go for people who are more established in the libertarian party? But um, Macro has actually left another comment when he says, Austin Peterson would have been one of the best ones currently, but few people know him, and the ones that do, even in his home state, see him as an extreme nutjob loon. Actually, one of the things about that is, Austin Peterson was somebody who ran against, um, you know, Gary Johnson and John McAfee and Daryl Perry in the Libertarian primary. On a personal level, I don't think that he is a nutjob loon. I mean, I think he is someone who is much closer to kind of the libertarian things that people want to talk about, although there was that show, The Majority Report, that slaughtered him for making a comment about, you know, it's like, we don't need roads because we can just use jetpacks instead. And I totally knew what he meant. He just meant, like, it's about the ideas. It's about, like, you know, the human brain, you know, has to be constantly generating ideas to solve worldly problems. And, you know, it's like, no matter what situation is before you, you need to start thinking in a different way. Because he introduced it by saying, we don't need roads where we're going. And it's like, I really think that that's kind of the message that he was trying to convey out there. But if we're going to keep talking about Rand Paul, um, you know, it's just like, he hasn't declared anything yet. We should say that. And we'll get back to something about him in a second. But our next one comes to us from one of my uploads on Andrew Yang. I've covered Andrew Yang more than any other presidential candidate on this channel, possibly just because he announced his candidacy so early. But we have one coming to us from Austin Clements. And Austin may reply to some of my comments on Andrew Yang's UBI plan, which is to give, you know, every eight adult ages 18 to 64 $1,000 a month until, you know, retirement age, or at least till the age of 64. He says, thoughtful video. Thanks. I'm hopeful about what humanity could do with a lot of basic needs covered. Maybe I'm an idealist, but I think a lot of people just turn to drugs to cope with difficult circumstances and poverty or lack of meaningful work. Also, think of the crime difference. Speaking of someone who got mugged for the first time ever a week ago, I want the guy who robbed me to have $1,000 a month. I think people only turn to that when they're lacking other means for survival. Guess you could say it's because someone's too lazy to get a job, but let's face it, robbing someone is a lot of work and dangerous as hell. I personally doubt people do it because it's, an easy, because it's easy and appealing. And, you know, I wrote back to Austin after he left that comment, very emotional, and once again, I'm very sorry that he got mugged, but it's like, you know, um, there are two big things that people are talking about with universal basic income. The first is kind of the more Andrew Yang platform, where he wants people to start thinking about businesses in a new way. He wants people to be 
kind of visioning, envisioning a future in which they can be developing businesses that will kind of coincide with the rise of automation. But the other thing is the Humanity Party put out, a, you know, sort of a very large response to that where they're like, do not give people cash. If you give them cash, they'll just buy drugs. And I believe that's what Austin's comments were about. They were really just sort of like, Austin is trying to say, if people had the UBI and um, they had the basic needs covered, then they wouldn't really need to resort to, um, well, to things like robbery and like, you know, trying to get mugged, you know, like, so no, like, so no one would um, really need to uh, resort to these measures to just try and obtain money. So no matter what angle you look at it, it would not only uh, give people ways to think of new businesses, not only give people a way to get food, but what Austin is saying is that um, it would also improve the security situation because you would never have to um, really resort to these dangerous measures just to try and get, well, money, <laughs> for lack of a better explanation. But our next one comes to us from X Chris Cross X. Yeah, not crisscross, but X Chris Cross X. And um, Chris, let's call him that, has left me um, le is left a comment on my upload about Al Franken running as a president, running as president in 2020. And this is actually kind of a very interesting one. The first person I've ever heard use this idea. I would love for Franken to be Biden's running mate in 2020. And, you know, this is the first time I've ever heard about this. I mean, the reason I did an upload on Al Franken was Bill Maher had made some comments on Real Time about how Al Franken is the um, only candidate that can use his comedian-style background to counter Donald Trump. And the difference is, though, Al Franken isn't just a comedian. He's not just an SNL cast member. He was a United States senator before he was disgraced. And on my very first political upload on this channel, I talked about I said it's a shame Al Franken won't be running for president for the sole fact that, you know, he would capitalize on his former comedic background. He would capitalize on his ability as a comedian to kind of pull the crowds in, not to mention he's one of the most articulate members of the Democratic Party. Well, I'm not sure what he's up to these days. I made that video, but mind you, in uh, the spring of 2017 before his allegations came out. And um, but uh, ex Chris has some more things here. He says it could take two or three future presidents to repair the damage done by Trump, whereas Biden, although older, has the experience to help a great deal in one presidential term. Al Franken has a VP running mate as a VP running mate for the simple reason that Trump is afraid of him because he's aware that he fails miserably against Franken's satirical wit. You know, like, I haven't really talked too much about Donald Trump on this channel, and I'll leave that up to the audience to decide what they think about him. I'll just say no comment about Trump for now. But I definitely, definitely, definitely agree with X Chris that Al Franken has the sort of satirical wit that could destroy someone like Donald Trump. But he's uh, proposing something quite different than what I mentioned and what Bill Maher mentioned about Al Franken running as president. He suggests Biden who I'm, I'm not telling you, I'm not too crazy about Joe Biden, but, you know, ex-Chris has an interesting idea. Biden is the uh, top of the ticket, and then Al Franken is the running mate. First person I've ever heard to make that suggestion. But it's uh, kind of an interesting suggestion all the same. And we have a comment coming from Steve Borkowski. This is going back to uh, Rand Paul running as a libertarian. Steve Borkowski writes... I don't think Rand would want, W-A-N-T in capitals, want to run as a libertarian. You know, it's like, as we mentioned, Rand Paul hasn't run, um, he hasn't announced anything yet, and it's still a little far away right now at the time of this recording, September 28th, 2018. But it's like, the big thing that people are talking about is, if Rand Paul runs as a libertarian, you know, he could pull in the Ron Paul crowd. He could pull in people who wouldn't typically vote. He could pull in, you know, kind of like frustrated Republicans. He could get a lot of people together. However, I've also covered the candidacy of Daryl W. Perry on this channel. And Daryl Perry kind of put up, you know, Rand Paul as something. What, what metaphor did he use? 
something shiny to get attention and attract votes and just be like, that's all it is. And he was just sort of saying, the libertarians need to put up someone who has been a lifelong libertarian. They keep going for Republicans instead of people who have been lifelong members of the party. And, you know, 2016, we saw it very clearly. Gary Johnson and William Weld, the first governor-governor ticket since 1948. By the way, you notice that why there aren't too many governor-governor tickets because, you know, it's just like – it's this kind of like clash of back and forth, you know, it's like one's the independent thinker and then the other one is just kind of like the more resume builder and they kind of just, neither one of them looks like a giant, neither one of them looks that tall. They're both kind of fighting for the spotlight, if you can understand my meaning, and neither one of them gets to really shine as some like star, which is one of the big reasons why Donald Trump picked Mike Pence as a running mate and one of the big reasons why Hillary Clinton chose Tim Kaine as a running mate. You need to do two things. Make yourself look like a giant and ha don't have a running mate that overshadows you. And the second thing is to make yourself impeachable where it's like if you were to be impeached, then this guy or this lady would come into – office and no one would want that. So that's why we had Mike Pence and Tim Kaine knock on wood. Overall, though, um, we have a lot to look forward to to the upcoming election. I mean, I think there are pro Andrew Yang was predicting up to 25 Democrats will be running for president, and it's going to be a very, very large, very, very large uh, primetime debate and the undercard debate could have, you know, as many as 11 people on stage. Very, very competitive. The Libertarians will probably be putting up a lot and we don't really know what would happen yet. But on uh, Andrew Yang, we just have one last comment. Andrew Yang comes to us from Schenectady, New York. And thank you to Tracy Tracy, who leaves our last comment of the day, because I can't pronounce that n that name. And I was saying Schenectady, Schenectady, and she actually wrote out some phonetics for me. Schenectady. She wrote it out in little, you know, phonetic spaces so that I could pronounce it better. Tracy Tracy, thank you so much. Um, all right. Every thank you to everybody who's left any comments on the political uploads. I know they're not super popular on this channel, but uh, they're not really going anywhere. It's a subject of fascination for me, the upcoming presidential race for 2020. Um, I can't really comment. I can't pick a winner right now because we don't know all the names that are running. And although on this channel as well, we've covered Kamala Harris. We've um, covered you know, some kind of far-off candidates like Carmen Yulin Cruz is even a possibility. And we tell you, the ones we talked about today were Al Franken, Rand Paul, Daryl Perry, Andrew Yang. We've done a lot. John Delaney was another one covered on this channel. And I, in the future, I've been – I was meaning to do a video on Michael Avenatti because he has talked about it seriously running and he visited Iowa already. Michael Avenatti, of course, the lawyer for Stormy Daniels and one of the accusers of Brett Kavanaugh. But it's like – I mean there are just so many other topics going on and – um that's kind of the short end of that. But I would like to say thank you to anyone who's left a comment. It um, Just an absolute thank you across the board. I love your comments. Thank you so much for listening to any of these uploads, especially the political ones, which aren't that, very, aren't that popular. But maybe things will heat up once we get closer to the presidential primaries and the general election in 2019 and 2020. All right. Well, that's all for me now. Thank you for tuning in once again. Until next time.